On this Winchester World of Whitetail, host Ron Spomer flashes back on his season-long quest for trophy bucks. There he is. Yeah, that's it. There we go. That's a legal buck. Oh, Mac, he's going. Stop there, buddy. Oh, yeah, he has no idea I'm here. I think I'll shoot him. Here goes. From Idaho to Montana, Nebraska to Wyoming, Ron stalks them all in his relentless pursuit of world-class whitetails. There he is, coming right in front of the brush there. I didn't spend a lot of time counting antlers and points. Hal said, that's him, take him, and I took him. That's our buck right there, take him. Spomer puts his skills to the test as he hunts across the western U.S. on this Winchester World of Whitetail. Look at that big buck up there chasing the doe already. Heck, that's our buck. I had no doubt I could put the shot in there if I could hold the rifle steady. I got against a post, slid the rifle through, everything was clear, put it high on the shoulder, launch it. World of Whitetail. First up, World of Whitetail host Ron Spomer sets his sights on the unforgiving mountains and valleys of northern Idaho. Rugged Canyon country in North Idaho is not what most of us would think of as whitetail habitat, but our animals are here in pretty steep, nasty country. Here's what we're up against. Steep, dry, rocky terrain that's difficult to maneuver through. That's going to be our number one challenge. These bucks could be hiding in a thick brush, but they could also be spread out on these hillsides. What we've learned over the years is that these dry canyon North Idaho whitetails will act more like mule deer and stay up in the high country. Ron's hunting in the rugged country outside of Peck, Idaho with Boulder Creek Outfitters, where spot and stock hunting is the best way to bring down a bruiser. Our first approach is going to be glassing. Search this country, look in the brush pockets, look on the hillsides, try to find those deer. We've got our work cut out for us this week on Winchester World of Whitetail. It may not look like whitetail habitat here in northern Idaho, but with guide Shane Harris leading the way, it's not long before Ron locates a beauty. Oh, when he looks at me, the mass is impressive. There's a doe coming out. There's two does. Two does coming out of that. There, to the left. there, he, there he is. Oh, he's big. Look at the bulk on him. He's going to run across that whole open hillside. Look at that. He's a 200 pound. Chasing those does. He's going over the top. He's going right back in that hole there. So we know how to get in there. We know how to get in there. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's get ourselves up there. Plan B. Let's try it. With their trophy buck likely just over the next hill, Ron and Shane make their way into position to see if they can spot him hiding in the thick stuff. So I kept glassing, Shane was glassing, and a flicker of motion off to the left caught my eye, and there was my buck coming out of some brush. I think I've got him. Yeah, I think that's our buck. When I saw that buck, I was pretty sure it was him right away. That's a pretty distinctive rack with those big high tines curving up like that. All we got now is to double check the range, and make sure we've got a good clean shot. That's less than 300 yards. 275, I can take that. That's doable. He's behind some branches when he comes out of there. Let's just watch him. I'm gonna plug my ears, so okay. are you ready for this? Yep. You watch the shot. When you yeah. I've got a good shot, I'm gonna take him. And he didn't know we were there, so there's no need to rush the shot. Check the wind, get a good solid rest in my sticks. I got my arm up on the rock, so I was rock steady. Take him whenever you're ready. All right, here goes. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Who was it, over him? I couldn't tell. I don't think I hit him. It didn't sound like it. Uh-uh. What? Oh, nope, there he goes down. All right. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you, man. I'm impressed with your hunting skills. What surprised me about this buck when I shot was his reaction. I have never before seen a buck lift his tail and run off bounding the way this one did. That's usually the sign of a missed deer. I always assume that if you get a hit, 
he's going to drop his tail and run low. None of this frisky bounding kind of thing. But as he ran, he started to wobble, and then he crashed into the bushes. We know we'd gotten him. But I didn't hear the usual whump, and I didn't get a, a physical reaction like I expected. Look at that. That is nice, but Look at this tall tines on this guy. That's a heck of a North Idaho deer. This isn't that strange. I have never seen you know, I the end of the beam either. come up like that. It's Both just like, yeah, it's just like another point and the beam ought to still be going out yeah. there, huh? Once again, Idaho has surprised me. You would think I would know enough. I've been in this state for years and years and I've hunted it many times for whitetails. But you know white-tailed deer, they can always throw you a curve and they can always surprise you. And this was really no exception to that rule. Hey, I really enjoyed hunting with you, Shane. Yes, sir. Congratulations. No, it's man, been, a, been a good hunt. I was so impressed with the height of these. They're just a spectacular tall rock. Now the fun begins. Here we go. Get bottom. Ah. I got against a post, slid the rifle through, everything was clear. I had no doubt I could put the shot in there if I could hold the rifle steady. Put it high on the shoulder, launch it. Well, they're starting to move. They're starting to move. It's a good sign. Look at that big buck up there chasing a the doe already. Oh, he's coming right down following those does. Heck, that's our buck. Fresh off his awesome Idaho buck, Ron's moved on to the rugged terrain of northwestern Montana, where there are more and bigger bucks than most folks think. I love to hunt Montana for, for many reasons. You know, the beauty of the country is definitely one of them, and the abundance of game is certainly another. It's the fourth largest state in volume, and it has only about 980,000 people living in it. There's probably more game here than there is people. For this hunt, Spomer's in the hill country up north in Kalispell, Montana, and he's hunting with Northern Rockies Outfitters alongside veteran guide Jay Pribble. This area of Montana makes it a great place for whitetails. We have a lot of hawthorn brush. We have timber that the deer can take cover in. We typically hunt whitetails that are a mature deer. We try to concentrate on the four and a half year old deer. In my estimation, a guide is someone who knows not just the animals and their behavior, but the land itself. And when you can hunt with a guide like Jay, who grew up on a ranch of this size and has hunted it since he was probably seven or eight years old, I mean, that is a huge advantage. The top end of the bucks here are 150 inch class deer. That's typically what we're gonna be hunting, somewhere between a 135 and 150 inch deer. Most of us think of whitetails as a lowland, rolling farmland, Midwest kind of animal. I think most folks who love whitetails and like to experience the full breadth of whitetail behavior need to come to a place like this and see and hunt whitetails in Rocky Mountains. These wide open spaces are ideal for spot and stock hunting, and it's not long before Ron and Jay are on the bucks. Now it's just a matter of getting a clean shot. Jay has been seeing whitetails bedded way up this draw. What we're working against here is big, vast open distances. How are we gonna get into position without those deer seeing us? We're gonna drop down into these trees and sneak up over those hills to try to get into position so we can move from there. It doesn't look like typical whitetail habitat, but it sure looks like fun. Look at that big buck up there chasing a the doe already. Heck, that's our buck. It was absolutely gorgeous the way this deer showed up. There was a lighted ridge. The sun had just come out after a little rain shower, and over that ridge started to come deer. And this guy came over looking tall and handsome, and we knew that was the one we were looking for. That's a buck. If he comes down here, I'm going after him. So he comes now off the mountain, and I'm thinking, this deer is never going to make it all the way down here. He's got to come like 600 yards. But when they got into this little thicket of hawthorns and they disappeared into it, they didn't come out for quite a while. I was almost starting to consider walking over there and flushing them. Well, fortunately, this time we didn't have to do it. He did come out. Hey, there he is. I see him in the brush. Yeah, you can see his horns moving. There he's come out in that little gap right there. He didn't seem like he wanted to come all the way out of those trees. And before he drifted back into them, I thought I'd better get the job done. So I got out of our little fence post blind and crawled around to the fence and had to get up over a little rise so I could shoot. Otherwise, I was risking hitting that fence. And I ended up, uh, the rangefinder said, 330 yards from the buck. And that's a pretty easy shot for a sharp shooting rifle like the seven millimeter Remington I was shooting. I had no doubt I could put the shot in there if I could hold the rifle steady. I got against a post, 
and I also against a bottom wire on that square hog wire. Slid the rifle through, everything was clear, up against the post, put it high on the shoulder, launch it. Yes, dropped him. Good shot, Ron. Down that buck went like a ton of bricks. That was a great feeling to see that buck pile down like that. That bullet went right where it was supposed to go. Catches the shoulder, hits the lungs, and the spine. So you end up with a shoulder shot, a neck shot, and a lung shot all at the same. Great way to target a deer. Boy, that rack stands up nice and tall, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Man. He never moved from where you hit him. Congratulations, Ron. Oh, thanks, man. I mean, it's really fun hunting with you. I love your hunting style. Golly, that's a good hintage. Yeah. Whoa, look at the face on this guy. Look at that. He's perfect. Boy, Montana whitetail hunting was as much fun and excitement as I thought it would be. We've seen it before on Winchester World of Whitetail. Whitetails will adapt to their habitat and do whatever they have to do. And in mountain lion country, they stay out of the brush most of the time and stay out in the open. So be ready to change your hunting tactics for whitetails in Montana. That's a legal buck. Oh, Mac, he's going. Stop there, buddy. Oh, yeah, he has no idea I'm here. I think I'll shoot him. Here goes. With two bucks in the books in Idaho and Montana, Ron shifted his focus to northern Nebraska, which is quickly becoming known as a hotspot for big bucks. Kiapaha, Nyabrara, the Elkhorn, romantic names for romantic little unknown rivers in north central Nebraska, and a great place to hunt whitetail deer. There aren't a lot of people living up here, but there are a lot of big whitetails, and we're gonna find out just how many and just how big they get in this little special corner of Nebraska on Winchester World of Whitetail. For this hunt, Spomer has joined forces with Double K Guide Service, game-tested outfitters for both sides of the Nebraska-South Dakota borderlands. I've hunted this sort of country before. We've got open country mixed in with some brush and some cedar trees, and then, of course, our riparian habitats down along the rivers and creeks. That's really made for some great whitetail habitat here in Nebraska. Finding the deer might be a little bit of a problem because, all oh, once again, property boundaries. So we've got to figure out how to get the deer on the property we can hunt. Glass and stalk, probably the hunting technique we'll use. I don't anticipate a lot of problem finding a good deer, except for we've got three days to do it. And it's always tough. Do you shoot the first 130, 140 class buck you see, or do you hold off for a bigger one, and then maybe not get a crack at it? We're going to find out. A South Dakota native, Ron loves hunting wide open spaces. And by teaming up with Double K and guide Joe McDougall, he gains access to a whole lot of it. You Joe? I'm Joe. Ah, <laughs> great. Good to meet you. Have any trouble finding the place? No, no, you gave me great directions. Pretty simple. Nebraska? Follow the road, you'll get there. Yep, exactly. Hey, I'm sorry for the rush on it, but I've only got three days to hunt, so I just really need to get right to it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you want me to hop in and I'll show you where to go? Oh, absolutely. You're okay. Ready to roll. Yeah, All right. Perfect. With Joe supplying plenty of inside information, it's up to Ron to put it all together and get himself in position to put the crosshairs on a big Nebraska buck. All right, here's the play. The wind is out of the south. I need to get on that hillside. Up and down these draws are where these deer travel. So I'm gonna get up there, sit by some yuccas or maybe a little cedar tree and watch down into that draw for traveling deer. It's afternoon already. Great time to stay out here. Most hunters make the mistake of going in for that midday snooze. <laughs> Much as I appreciate a good snooze, when the rut is on, you need to stay out in the woods. Got my scope all set up here. I can dial any power I need. I keep it set at around six maybe eight to cover this valley. If something's right below me though, I can crank it down really quickly. I've got tight little pockets. I can't trust a deer to mosey through there and feed and give me a perfect shot. I won't even have time probably to assess antlers all that much, but you've got to be quick. You've got to know how to use those sticks, how to pick them up, move them with the rifle and get into them in a hurry because those little pockets and holes, a buck on the move gets through them in a hurry. Man, that brush pocket over there looks hot. There's got to be deer in there. Just come out of there. There he is. Yeah, that's it. There we go. That's it, that's it. That's a legal buck. Oh, Mac, he's going. Stop there, buddy. Oh, yeah, he has no idea I'm here. I think I'll shoot him. Here goes. Ready? Yeah, look like a heart shot. Whoo, 
Woo, baby. Thank goodness I was ready. Boy, that's the way it sometimes happens. You're on your last day, it's the last afternoon, about two o'clock. I thought it was gonna be pretty grim in here because there wasn't much activity today. That was activity enough right there. Hey, Joe. How are you been? Oh, just glass and I heard you shoot. Yeah. Just once must have been a good one. Huh? Yeah, right there. So I was gonna jump the creek and go get him. Yeah. You wanna help? Yep, I'll come along. See anything? Yeah, there's some blood over here. Got some? Yep. Hey, there he is. I'm up under the cedar. That's a nice buck. Yeah, looks like a good three-year-old. Almost a 10-inch tine right there. Pretty close. Nine anyway, a little over nine. Yeah, he's been rubbing fresh here. Still some moist cedar, it looks like, huh? All right, let's get to work. Yeehaw! There we go! There he is, coming right in front of the brush there. I didn't spend a lot of time counting antlers and points. Hal said that to him, take him, and I took him. That's our buck right there, take him. Winchester World of Whitetail host Ron Spomer knows that among the rifle hunter's most crucial assets, a sturdy scope is at the top of the list. Optical instruments aren't just an adjunct to a hunt. I think they're essential. After all, our eyeballs are optical instruments, and we augment them with these extra tools. And these days, scopes like this Bushnell 6500 Elite are so versatile, you can do anything with these. You turn that power down to 2.5x, and you can see an elephant at 10 feet. But if you have a small target way out there, you can dial this all the way up to 16 power, and that's incredible versatility. A scope like this will see you through a lifetime of hunting. Ron's had a great year so far, taking trophies in Idaho, Montana, and Nebraska. Now he's looking to go out on a high note in the underrated whitetail state of Wyoming. When I found out I was going to be hunting the Little Missouri River in Northeast Wyoming with FAB Outfitters, I didn't have any idea it was gonna look like this. I mean, this is dry and desiccated looking desert country. Doesn't look like it's the best place for whitetails. We have a ranch manager and outfitter guide who has been here for 20 years and he's supposed to really know the country and where these whitetail hang out. If he can't find them for us, probably no one can. Let's see just how much of a challenge we're facing and how well we do on Winchester World of Whitetail. Ron's hunting outside of Hewlett, Wyoming in the shadow of the famed Black Hills with veteran guide Hal Bowles of FAB Ranch Outfitters. We run a spot and stock, we get up, we glass, and then we put our game plan together on how we're gonna get to that animal. And my guides and myself have hunted this country long enough, we can formulate a game plan to get down on that animal for you. But more importantly is that he has a history on this ranch and he knows these deer. He knows where they like to spend their time, where, where they go when it's dry versus when it's wet where they go during the hunting season versus non. I mean, he just knows his animals, and that's so important. Put Hal's local knowledge together with Ron's vast whitetail hunting experience, and you've got a combination that can mean the difference between a trophy and coming home empty-handed. Get to this low spot here. Oh, yeah, getting that dip. Good job. There are two bucks off in the left. I don't know if you can see them from where you are. They just see their backs over the dike. I can't see their antlers, but I can see that they're fighting. They are just a sparring out there, aren't they? And there's three does just feeding around them, so that rut's coming on. If we can walk right up that riverbed, if we can get there, we're gonna stick ourselves out in the open, but it's worth a try. Dip down here, go through that, and crawl over that tree. Crawl over that tree and just kind of hip-hop our way over there, Ron. I seen a mature buck down there. Ron seen him. We felt it was a, the deer we wanted. Yep, they're right there in that field, over that dike where I thought they'd be. That's that same bunch. That's that same bunch. Let's work down and get her on that dike. We'll go up right here. That may peek over there first. We might have to move. Let me look. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, we gotta go down here. Okay, it's gonna, it's gonna happen fast. When we first spotted the deer down there, they kind of busted us, and we knew we had to move down anyway, so we ran down as quick as we could. You're gonna have to hurry, you're gone. There he is, doing it. He's going into the brush, take him. These dikes aren't just for irrigation. They give us an advantage to keep moving down them and trying to get in a better shooting position. They give us a blind to get behind and keep moving down. You pop over that dike and your skyline. I mean, they're seeing you against a clear sky and you're pretty close to them a lot of times. And 
to Hal's credit, he had told me, be ready, this could happen in a hurry. There he is, coming right in front of the brush there. When he turned broadside and stepped back one more time, I thought, boy, I'd better get this done in a hurry. I didn't spend a lot of time counting antlers and points. Hal said, that's him, take him, and I took him. That's our buck right there, take him. You got him. Boy, did I get him off full of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I got shot. <laughs> Felt like a good hit. Did you it, see it? Yeah, it was a good hit. Did you hear it? Yep, did I could hear, hear it. Yep. All right, I guess now we have to go find him and get to work. Good job. All right, that was fun. Oh, big body on him. Big body deer. But small antlers. That's smaller than I thought they were. I was afraid of that this year. Well, it was a big body deer, and I was surprised that the antlers weren't larger than they were. And often you'll get a fairly lightly antlered deer, and it's just a two-year-old. But this animal had the body and the bulky neck of an older deer. Well, let's drag him out onto the flat here and take care of him, huh? Sounds good. I really enjoyed hunting with Ron. He's a very knowledgeable man. He's a well-read man. He's a great hunter. You got him? Yep. Good Lord, he's heavy. God, we're good. They should hire us for grunt work. 